All right. Sorry about that. I usually try to just go live straight up, but sometimes I got to do some things right before, like at the last minute. But I'm here. And it is time to talk fights once again. Um, I'll start with the fight that is fresh, fresh in our memory. Now, that which was the uh, co-main event for Wei Li's title challenger, Yan Zhao Nan. But first, before we delve into that we have to deal with this first round there is some rumblings there's some rumblings that Jan was allowed to use illegal substance illegal an illegal substance to recover I don't know how true that is how reliable the source is, whoever got that information, but that's what's going around. And there was some dispute about her being allowed to continue after being choked out, essentially choked out, and being allowed to use an illegal substance. So if y'all hear any you know, validation of that, please let me know, because I don't know nothing about that. Was it ammonia they saying? I thought they could use ammonia, but I don't know. I thought is ammonia let me shut up anyways i thought it was a decent fight now i heard some talk about how off Whaley looked and she looked off to me but i suspect that the reason she looked off like her offense offensively now first of all in the first round she almost sent she did send Jan to the uh, other realm. She, Yang was dead. She was dead. She killed her uh, as the first round ended. Sent her to the upper room, as uh, AC likes to say. Sent her to the upper room. Uh, Yang saw her life flash before she decided to go to sleep. Now, we all know that, right? I am willing to bet she knew that she was going to have to sleep for a second and accepted it. <laughs> you can see it all. <laughs> she knew she should have tapped. She knew she was being choked and she knew she couldn't get out. But she said, well, I just... Take a quick nap and hope to recover. <laughs> That's some true warrior stuff. Now, I'm not making fun of it. That was some true warrior stuff. You confident Suarez submits Jean? Hey, it wouldn't surprise me. For whatever reason, I feel like Suarez is a lot stronger than Whaley. Do you see how much bigger Jan looked than Wei Li? I really didn't expect that to be such a... Like, she was not only taller, she looked a little thicker than Wei Li. But Wei Li still, still super strong. Now, it was a, uh, somewhat of a tactical bout. Here's what I think happened with Wei Li's offense. I got a theory behind why she sort of looked off offensively. And it is because, I suspect it is because she was fighting Yan Xiao Nan. A pretty good striker. See, when you, this is what I think anyways. When you up against somebody who's probably your equal as a striker, you select certain strikes that will land you points, be significant, and most of all, open up an opportunity for you to take them down. And a lot of Whaley's, that's what I suspect. And I, and I thought that a lot of her strikes were done to uh, cause maximum damage, power shots. She focused on, it seemed like their team focused on 
power shots and like pot shots, what we call in boxing, pot, pot shots, significant shots, only power shots, only. You saw in the last round, she kicked Jan in the, in the jaw. Y'all got to be careful with that. She can't, from what I remember, she got kicked like twice and only put her, her, uh, her hand up after she got kicked. Looked like something they saw on film with Yan Yao Nan. Uh, so power strikes only. Because what I saw is the only difference between her offense against Yan and Whaley's offense against Carla was she was throwing insignificant strikes against Carla. Like jabs. She was peppering the jab against Carla. Faking and landing them. She looked like a uh, offensive expert against Carla because Carla is nowhere near the striker that Jan is. Whaley, even when Whaley threw uh, her fists, notice how they was windmill. They was all power shots for the most part. The only time I saw Whaley throwing a jab is when she was sort of trying to check. It was used like a check hook in boxing. Well, it's like a check jab. Shevchenko do it a lot. Looked like Whaley was employing that a little bit. And that's a good tactic because a lot of girls don't use that. It blunts your opponents. Off. It's an excellent tool against a, a fighter with uh, who throws combinations. Um, now, look, I hope that was the case. I hope Whaley ain't deteriorating already. But keep in mind. Okay, and, and her chin, there's some chin questions going around. But keep in mind, she's been fighting for a long time. She got a lot of wear and tear on her tires, but we've seen Jessica Andrade look subpar in some fights, and then she come right back. I'm willing to give Wei Lee uh, benefit of the doubt. I thought she looked strong and dominant against Man Lemos, and of course against Carla Sparza, as well as uh, in her fight against uh, Joanna in the rematch. So up against a fighter who looked like she had pretty good takedown a defense to me, people. Even though she got taken down multiple times, Jan put up more resistance than we used to seeing in the past. Yeah, Carla seemed to have locked in that crucifix effortless, effortlessly and just beat her out. Now, a lot of people feel like he should have stopped the fight. There was a couple moments during the fight where he could have stepped in and stopped it because she was taking a lot of shots. You know, it didn't look like she was about to get out of them, you know. So they let him fight through that. But, yeah, I can see uh, Suarez really submitting anybody. You say Suarez tough. Oh, yeah. That's a real tough fight. Um, I think Suarez tough fight for anybody. Unless you got like real top-notch takedown defense. And she was taken down here by Jan more than once, right? If I'm not mistaken. You need stellar takedown defense. And Billy, get back to your feet against Suarez. I don't co-sign with wrestling around with Suarez on the ground. With, I don't with, with nobody. Not even Verna. Suarez, take, get back up. Now... I know that's, but look, maybe somebody proved me wrong. I heard she called out Verna, but Verna's dangerous on the ground. Anybody can be submitted. Uh, Suarez had, did have some losses when she was a wrestler, so it can happen. But she's different, man. Suarez is like, she's always like in a dominant position. And in this fight, a few times, Wei Li was in a... Uh, not in, in an advantaged position. But Whaley is a mutant. Did you see how she twisted her body and got out of that? Uh, I think Jan was on top of her. Yeah, she was on top of her. She was like on top of her upper body, upper, upper body. Boy, Whaley got a freaky, freaky body, dude. I saw that in her fight against Tisha Torres. Real... Uh, just real athletic, super athletic. More athletic than Jean. I mean, uh, uh, Jan. And I thought that gave her an, an advantage over Jan, especially on the ground as, as they were squirming. But Jan has been training, clearly, on the ground. 
and uh, with her wrestling. Whaley couldn't put her away. But that looked dangerous for, uh, for Jan. Because it seemed like even with a tired Whaley who was gassed beyond belief, I thought by the second round, I thought Wei Lee was about to get knocked out. I, around the third round, I felt like all y'all had to do was touch her properly and she could knock her out. As it was, she took a shot and went to one knee, lost her legs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to look at that, man. We got to look at that. Unless Yan has improved her punching power. Because Yan ain't knocked nobody out. She ain't really, with her fist, really hurt nobody before she hurt Andras. But look, maybe that was the start of some scary, some serious scary power from Yan. But Whaley was throwing some bombs, man. A couple of those punches, it looked like it would have, it would have rocked Yan if she would have caught her. Gaylee would I still saw some power with Whaley, even though she uh, seemed kind of awkward as a striker. But that's what it looked like to me. She didn't, I suspect, her and her team didn't just want to go tit for tat as in the striking department with Jan. As you see, Jan mainly planned on, uh, uh, of course, striking with her, using her takedown defense. But she looked like she was focused on boxing, talking about Jan. Like she was... You know, strictly focused on using her fists. And, and I think it backfired on her. Landed a good kick, knocked Whaley. Whaley did seem off balance, and I thought that was because of fatigue. Um, And she just seemed, you know what I think it was with Whaley? She, she, she expended a lot of energy trying to finish her. She, she got excited because she thought the finish was coming. And, and, and um put all her energy into it yep that's what I suspect it was and sort of gassed herself out but she seemed to get a second win round and I knew she would and she always she usually does she has a pattern in catching the second win in the fourth towards the end of the fourth and she looked like she uh, caught a second win uh, got used to Jan's weakness as far as takedown defense, getting takedowns more often. I thought she was real close to finishing her more than once. So it may not have been a aesthetically pleasing victory, but I thought it was a pretty dominant victory. Uh, Jan had a few moments striking in, in the striking department, but I don't I didn't think she gave Wei Li all that much trouble. I thought Wei Li's Fatigue bothered her more than anything Jan did. So I thought fairly a strong, strong performance for the champion. All right, now what y'all talking about? What is y'all talking about? Glad they allowed the fight to continue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because Jan was, uh, she was game tonight. She was real game. I thought everybody was game. How about your boy Jamal Hill? Couldn't y'all feel that coming? I felt that coming. You can't be cocky and emotional with somebody like Alex Pereira. You gotta match Pereira's energy and outdo that. Pereira super, super. You know what really told me he's about to get knocked out? When he paid no attention to the low blow, stopped the referee from interrupting and his focus, talk about Pereira, was never broken. D Jamal Hills was. That was, I'm telling you right now, Jamal Hill was intimidated by that. Briefly. Briefly enough for him to get knocked out. Another thing I saw, and I hate to, well, I don't hate to. Let me digress to the men's real quick. I knew Jamal Hill was in trouble as soon as that fight started. He was reaching with everything. Jamal Hill I'm talking about. That Pereira dude is bigger, got a bigger frame, and a bigger, longer arms it looked like. He got better range with his shots, Alex Pereira. And he started to figure that out once Hill started to open up with left hands, right hands, reaching with that left Hill in the southpaw stance, 
throwing this left coming up way short. Way, I'm like, uh-oh, it, it was a wrap. Clearly, uh, Pereira's left hand is money, his left hook. And if I'm not mistaken, that's what ended the fight. But yeah, Hill, I know you're going to say, oh, rematch, rematch, nah. No, nah, no, nah. Hill, Hill don't have the athleticism. Pereira's a much uh, better striker. Now, on to uh, another fight. Mosey and Own down the card here. I want to deal with Kayla Harrison's uh, UFC debut against Holly Holm. Now, I know a lot of people don't like Kayla Harrison. But as I watched this fight, I was the happiest man in the WMMA community. I know I was. I was pacing through my uh, two-bedroom apartment, making a lot of noise, celebrating. I jumped up and down a couple times. I did. I did. I could not stop celebrating. I was happy during the first round. I was ecstatic, celebrating already because she just steamrolled her. Even, I thought, in the striking department. She looked way more confident striking. And I, I'm like, okay, it's a wrap. And it looked like she was, she was closing distance better than Holly Holm with strikes, I thought. Didn't even... Kayla didn't look bothered at all by the strikes thrown by Holly Holm. I didn't think at all. Totally relaxed. Look at her face. She was super confident. Now, I was, I was preparing myself to see her make a fool out of herself because she was talking a lot of smack. Talk about Kayla Harrison. Talked a lot of smack before the fight saying, I'm going to dominate Holly Holm and put the division on notice. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> but she walked she walked the walk even if she would have struggled see she she put herself up against it in that fight because even if she would have struggled she would have looked bad talking smack like that talking about you about to destroy her and put the division on notice but that's exactly what she did i think you look at the comment section see a lot of people saying that oh nobody can beat kayla nobody so yeah, kudos to her. And I was excited because y'all know I don't like Holly Holm. She's too old, man. After the first round, Holly was, you know, back on her feet where she wanted to be. Starting the second round. Look at how she looked. She looked bad, I thought. Holly Holm, I thought, looked bad when she got back to where she wanted to be. And Kayla still looked in control. In the, I, I thought the first and second round, I'm talking about when they were striking, uh, Kayla looked like she was in control. Now, Kayla with a real good team. We got to remember that. She is with a solid, solid team. So she could very well develop stellar skills. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Right? So she looked good in that fight, I thought. Dominated Holly Holm. I feel like Holly Holm, uh, the, no, man. And notice how Holly Holm usually gets stopped when she loses. Even though she does lose decisions as well. So you think Whaley's starting to struggle with the weight cuts? Wouldn't surprise you. Yeah, you can see it in the photos. I thought you could see it in the photos. Okay, let me briefly go back. It looked like to me Whaley's having excess skin at this weight maybe you know might be one of the reasons why she's been talking about uh moving she better because you know listen your chin is sacrificed with these cuts now on that nap kayla better be careful too but yeah might be a good idea for her to move up uh but kayla is moving down to a weight she hasn't been in. Now, I, I suspect somebody's going to... Listen, she lost to Pacheco. She's allowed to have a good performance. 
And that's what I'm going to chalk it up as. I'm not going to say she about to steamroll the whole division. A lot of people are saying that. Yeah, they talking like that already. Like, nobody's going to beat Kayla Harrison. She's about to own the whole division. And, of course, Kayla was uh, talking a little smack after the fight ended. I just believe she's going to get uh, tested and lose just like everybody else. Somebody already called her out. Was it Ketlin Vieira? I think they most likely give her a title shot. Most likely give it. Is Raquel even scheduled to defend her title? I don't even know. I don't even pay attention to 135 no more, man. I was excited uh, before the fight because I wanted to see if there would be a spark at 135. A dead division that's been dead for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Like a moment of silence for this dead division. I'm like, okay. I saw Kayla's arms. She looked like a bodybuilder. I'm like, okay, she got the look. But is she about to go in here and make a fool out of herself? I hope not. And especially not against Holly Holm. I'm like, oh, man. If she go, especially after talking all that smack, she go in there and get worked over by Holly Holm, man, please. That would have looked. Horrible. Horrible for the division. You hear me? That would have been a nightmare. But thank goodness. Thank goodness she delivered. That's that's the only thing I positive I can say. Well, I, I can't say that. She looked like a problem on the ground, obviously. Right? She's like a problem on the ground, but it's not like she's finished all her fight. Right, she got a number of decisions. This was another photo when when Jan was in the upper room. Y'all look at her. Telling me we she wasn't dreaming in this moment. She wasn't counting sheep. She was four years old again, right here in this moment. Didn't know where she was. She got up, was about to lay down again. Um yeah, Kayla got a lot of authority on the ground. She seems very strong. You know, I, home, Holly Holm has fought Raquel Pennington. Raquel, I did not think looked that strong against Holly Holm. She, Kayla at this weight looked like uh, stronger than usual. Strong, you know, stronger than the typical Bantam weight. The, the way she tackled her, the power, I, I saw some power there, man. I don't know about, <laughs> about nobody else. Man. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that, that video Nunez put out. And I think Nunez would, would come back. She'd come back for uh, Kayla Harrison. It, you see the buzz already. If Kayla Harrison could keep this going and, and take the belt, get ready. Amanda Nunez is going to call her out. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Combo Breaker in the building. She said it was a good performance, but... She's not about to dominate, especially when she still has to, man, that's what I'm saying. That's part of the, you know, the intrigue. How's how she going to look after she make this weight a few more times? And, you know, what if she get tired? This is the second round. Again, we, you know, we've seen her go to distance. We've seen her lose. So, I... I don't, she's not invincible like that. I've seen like uh, unbeatable talent 
it rarely breaks like that. You know, like like the vulnerabilities that she's shown. But look, I don't know. She looks strong, man. Holly Holm has shown good strength, I I believe, in her time. She's shown pretty good strength. She showed a lot of strength against Cyborg. That's hard to do. I always thought Cyborg was super, super strong. Especially when she started to focus on her grappling. Cyborg was showing in, in every fight a whole lot of strength. But you saw Holly Holm had her against the fence for a good, a good while in that fight. Uh... Kayla Harrison, the way she managed distance, when she's fresh, I don't think nobody could stay away from her. And it looked like, man, she got superhuman strength. She get you down. She got pretty good ground and pound. She got pretty good technique, period. You know, I can see her uh, making some. That's a weak division. Yeah, weak division. He's surprised no flyweights with free tiered on. UFC 300. How'd y'all think, who y'all thought won between Marina Rodriguez and uh, Jessica Andrade? Split decision, I didn't expect that. I thought they was going to give it to Rodriguez, but I, I don't dispute the decision. Uh, I thought as soon as that fight started, Rodriguez, I'll get to that fight. Another thing with, with uh, Kayla Harrison Somebody is going to show some takedown defense to her. Then what? It seemed like with all fighters, if you don't stop with, oh, not fighters, these judo grappler ground fighters, if they don't stop you early, just like we saw with Wei Lee. But no, Wei Lee was getting takedowns. A lot of fighters get too tired to continue getting takedowns. And even if they can, you know, the fighter got the opponent, got enough energy to get up. You know, to keep getting up. So will that happen? You know, these these ground fighters, they got their holes too, you know? Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's something to think about. Say, <laughs> you think, somebody said, Kayla Merks Nunez. <laughs> yeah, ain't she huge? I, I don't think I've seen nobody outsize Holly Holm like that. And she looked bigger than her, but not so much face-to-face. -face. But in the cage, it was like she grew an extra a few inches, Kayla Harrison. In all directions, up, the width, depth, just got thicker. And she looked like she put on a lot of weight between uh, the weigh-in and the uh, actual file. A whole lot of weight. I wouldn't be surprised. She was uh, around 164, 30, 55, about 155 up in there. She was huge. I'd like to know that, too. How much did she weigh? I always thought there were people who checked that on fight day. And I, I still believe it. I don't care what nobody say. I think um, those numbers are, are taken in every fight with every fighter. Somebody finds out uh, how how much they weighed. I hope they share that information. Hey, happy Andrade won. When did the division die? I have to think about that one. That's a good question. I'm not even going to. Uh, try to answer that. That's a good question. I will answer it. Kayla's midsection looked hollow at the weigh-in. Yeah. I thought she was going to possibly struggle in there. I, I was worried about how strong she looked, but man, she looked dangerous with that, as far as her strength. So, yeah. I don't know. I enjoyed the card, man. I had a lot of good fights on there. Man. Yeah, yeah, y'all heard what Rhonda said before that fight, and I guess Cyborg said that she'd want to fight the winner if Nunez. I don't, I don't know how true that is, but I suspect Dana would would work with him. Have I mean he's already dealt or done business with Cyborg for so long, anyways. 
you know, he, he might try to make that happen. One fight thing, he's done it before. But yeah, I thought I thought the fights were I, I enjoyed them. I don't know about nobody else. Right. So yeah, Kayla had listen, I'm behind Kayla. I'm I'm in I'm in the bandwagon. A hundred percent. That might sound weird. But I told y'all I don't I don't care how these fighters are outside the cage. If you making noise, I'm watching. It, okay. Let me ask this. Is she when she fights next time, will you watch? We all gonna watch. So I'm I give fighters, if you if you get my attention, you got my attention. I'm gonna go ahead and admit it. So listen, I hope she steamrolls. Cause I think that would bring the division back. I don't think Rocky can do it. I'll see. And listen, I hope y'all don't listen to videos like these. I told y'all I don't know how many times. Don't watch these kind of videos. Hope y'all not listening. I don't think Rocky can revive this division. It require a combination of things, a character. I think Kayla got the character. People calling her Terminator, Terminatrix. She does has a unique, a unique style, right? A, and she looks, she's powerful, like a, a tank in there. Especially, I understand too. This is the first time we've seen her at 135. So there might be a bigger discrepancy strength-wise between her and other Bantamweights. One that we haven't seen before at the higher weights. And even at the higher weights, she was bull strong. At 135, they may not, may not be able to do nothing with this big, huge, muscular girl. Again, if, if anybody else has muscle holly home around like that before in the past please let me know i'm not beyond bad memory let me know she was lifting her up uh mauling and manhandler just doing whatever she want at one point you saw she was just moving her hand anywhere she wanted to put it and giving her the business ability to make opportunities for elbows a lot of fighters struggle with that. Kayla's pretty, she better than the average. She better than average at creating opportunities to land elbows and to just, you know, execute her ground to pound, period. That's going to give fighters a whole lot of problems. A whole lot of problems. I think she can overpower Meyer Bueno Silva. Uh, and maybe everybody. Maybe everybody. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm... Uh, a Harrisonite, Kayla Harrisonite. They're going to make a nickname for us. I'm it. I'm not going to get a poster or a desktop background, nothing like that, but uh, I think she got the potential. I mean, look, who else is there? Who else is there? Is there anybody else who could even possibly revive that division? Pena, I don't think so. Even if Pena was dominant, people would hate her and they would mock her style of fighting. Forever. Now, Rocky, I think, get more respect as a fighter than Pena, a little bit. Not enough to revive the vision. Ketlin Vieira, no. Silva, no. She had a she had a little spark. Any fighter does who's undefeated at the division. Silva was that for a little while. And I was behind her during that time. Again, I support anybody doing well. Okay, fighters. I'm not biased against nobody. I support anybody doing well. And hey, if you can make a comeback, that's basically what Silva was doing at this division. Irene Aldana, no, no, Holly Holm. No, no. Now, I'd like to see Kayla Harrison against Macy Chazon. I don't think she's going to fight her, but that's a fight I'd like to see. So, yeah, good for Kayla. I think she's she has started a spark. I'm going to go ahead and put that out there. I think she's brought a spark. Come on, you got to admit it. You got to admit it. She has brought a spark back to 
Bantamweight. Now on to the other fight on this card here. Marina Rodriguez. Let's deal with this girl and this style of hers that gets her in all kinds of trouble. I knew she'd be in trouble in this fight because her striking, she always got to throw combinations. She always got to have her feet planted and throw a multi-strike combination. She's not a really mobile striker like that. And I knew that Andraj could time those combinations and counter her. She would have her moments in this fight. Striking with her. Uh, another thing, it's pretty easy to kick Marina's legs for whatever reason. She don't really defend those leg, leg kicks that well. A lot of times she struggled to land her own. But Andrade got way more power. Rodriguez, her, I told you, her power is not that destructive. She was able to catch the glass chin uh, girl, the, uh, what's her name? Mandaribas. I don't think that's going to happen again. Now she got some steam. She got a little pop. She started to bleed. Uh, Andrade's nose started to bleed a little bit. But she was eating those shots. Jessica was eating those shots. And Jessica can be hurt. Okay? She can be stunned. She can be hurt. And But the thing is, if you don't respect, if she don't respect your power, she's going to keep trying to walk you down. Yes. Yeah. The, somebody else mentioned it in the chat room. Does Marina not know how to check leg kicks? She always eat them. Here's the thing with uh, Jessica Andrade. You can't walk backwards against Andrade. You can't let her walk forward. You can't. You can't. She cannot fight going backwards. Period. Bad game plan by Marina Rodriguez team in that fight. Rodriguez didn't figure that out until it was too late. And it looked like she figured it out on her own. It looked like they went in there with that Joanna game plan. No. No. They're starting to turn against that style. Don't you? Fighters, fighters, fighters. Natalia Silva, listen up. Y'all better be careful with that style. If, if, if you're using that move around Ali style and you find your opponent is constantly marching you down, you better stop moving and walk forward. Andraj, and I hate to say this, when a taller fighter like Rodriguez stepped to her, she going to usually back up. I'm talking about Jessica Andraj. When, when Rodriguez decided to stand her ground, Andraj stopped walking forward. And in moments, Andraj has started to walk backwards. I believe she could have done that that whole fight. I'm talking about Rodriguez. But she just didn't come in there with that game plan. You saw she came as soon as the fight started. She was moving around, throwing little shots, moving around. I'm like, oh, here we go. She about to run, move back. That can lose you a fight against Andraj, especially... If when she lands, she got your body like a noodle. She had so much power. She was knocking Marina out of her location. Like when she would hit her, Rodriguez would end up in a different location in the cage. You know, clear. And she, I think she won on those power shots. Uh, another thing. I haven't looked at the, the uh, strike stats, but I only I think Rodriguez only outlanded her in headshots, and that Andraj might have edged her in leg kicks and body shots. So, yeah, I could easily see that that's probably a legit decision, though. Can't argue with that decision. Rodriguez needs some power. Simple as that. Look at her her frail body. She lacked power, man. I don't trust those 
noodle punches. She needs some real meat, some real beef on her on her body, on her frame, like Jessica Andrade got. Got to have good balance. Whaley, I thought always thought had a pretty good balance of power and and, and uh, strength and speed technique, but she might want to think about it. Because once she gets a little gassed, I don't ever trust Whaley when she's tired like that. She do that, you know, it, it, it's fairly, um, I've seen it a few times. She'll go crazy, and then around round three, she'll get super gassed. Did against Yoana, and she lost that round, and she was gassed like that. Y'all don't have much power. Y'all look like she's, you know, I, I felt like she could have knocked her out. And as it was, she lost her, her legs in that moment. You know, you landing, you can't let Andrade hit you like this. Well, look at Marina's, where, where her hand's at right now. I was saying this during the fight. I'm like, why does she have not have any defensive construct when they get into close quarters? And... Rodriguez only wants to land shots from the outside. She has no mid-range offensive arsenal. If she's if she doesn't have you in a Muay Thai clinch, she is vulnerable at mid-range. She is almost helpless at mid-range and close range if she if you're not if she doesn't have you in a tie clinch, where are her elbows? She badly need elbows. She don't use them enough. Now, as a Muay Thai, I thought she was a Muay Thai fighter. I don't think she, and she should because she has no mid-range. She don't know how to tuck no hooks. With, that's just what I'm saying. She, she, she needs you way out, far on the outside, like a Deontay Wilder type. And as soon as you get beyond that range, there's nothing. Nothing but their limp, weak, frail body absorbing shots having a, a much bigger impact on you than your shots having on them. Like I said, it looked like Andrade eating, eating some of those shots like, like it was nothing. So, yeah, power differential. She don't... Uh, she don't have the same type of offense as Yan Shaona. I think Yan sit down on her shots better than Rodriguez. And I think Yan is a better counter striker. Rodriguez is not really a counter striker. She's got a lead and it's usually a three, two, three shot combination where she's standing in just one spot and she got to finish that flurry. It's just too easy to figure out. Right, we saw Lemos dominate her striking. So I'm not surprised. I wasn't surprised by the outcome of that fight. Yeah, a lot of people are happy for Jessica Andrade. Hey, I'm happy for all of them. None of them died. Uh, no, I don't think anybody had any serious injuries. They got a crazy, very crazy job that I don't want. I don't want, not at my age. If I was young and I was real good, I'd like to do it. But if I couldn't dominate, I don't want to be one of these guys in there just, you know, getting your brain damaged, you mid-tier, floating around, you know, Never get a title shot, nah. And that's most likely what you'll be in uh, martial arts. I'd have to get it in boxing. That way I'd have a, a much bigger advantage. But yeah, Jamal Hill, don't ever try to match a man with a demeanor like Alex Pereira with emotion. Don't ever try to do that. Because you notice Hill fought the same way he was acting leading up to the fight. Attention is all over the place. 
more flash than substance. You know, just not not measuring distance well with those shots at all. Did he land any of those shots? Okay, Pereira in the orthodox stance, Hill, Southpaw, Hill was leading with left, straight left hands. I thought hit nothing but air. And who got the better left hook? And Pereira puts himself in position to land the left hand much better. He's much more skilled at that. I don't know what uh, Hill, before the fight, he said Pereira wasn't on his level. I have no idea why MMA fighters talk like that. It blows my mind. Y'all watch too much Floyd Mayweather and, and people like that. Y'all better stop looking at them Muhammad Ali movies. Everybody is tit for tat in MMA for the most part. For the most part. Most of y'all can't talk like that. There are more dominant boxers. It's, it's more of a finite craft where uh you know you can there's i think there's more opportunities for you to advance beyond your competition it's not so much in in mma not so much in mma so yeah talk like that can backfire and it did that punch almost looked like a left hand uppercut right <laughs> it looked like uh hill wasn't even paying attention he was distracted, I told you. He was distracted by how well Pereira dealt with that low blow. You're like, uh-oh. He, he knew Pereira had his timing. Nothing but trouble after that. Like, wow. You take people like Pereira serious, especially you, if you plan on striking with the dude. <laughs> You want to box him? <laughs> oh, God. These fighters are not going to worry me. <laughs> yeah. It felt good to, to soak up some, some MMA. And I got a real good streaming site. You know, you know, one of those good streaming sites where, where you know, you, you pay a fee, I guess. But I'm, I'm satisfied. They did a pretty good job. They wanted to do something special for 300. The, the Max Holloway fight. That was like something out of, a, out of a movie. Who picked Justin Gaethje? Who? I had no man. Anybody could see how that fight was going to go. Justin, strong dude, good speed. But he gets hit a lot, man. He gets hit a lot. He gets hit a lot. He gets hit too much for me. So I, I figured Max. Max seemed like he started to make a comeback. Because some of these fighters, they really built for this. And, and some of them seem like they start to deteriorate a lot faster than others. Some of them seem like they never deteriorate, they, they, you know. And that's just how it is. Some people just got thicker bones. Uh, yeah. You know, when you talk like that, like Kayla was talking, I'm going to watch to see if you back it up. That I love seeing athletes that's one of the main reasons i watch combat sports is to see how much confidence the athletes have in themselves to, to see if they try to talk like kayla harrison talked and to see if they can back it up you know it's an amazing thing to see even if you don't like them you gotta admit you gotta respect them whoever it is the conor mcgregor's or whatever you gotta respect them. they go in there and do what they say they're gonna do Hey, hats off to you. She lived it up. She, I don't think she want, lost a second. Did Holly even hit her? She I thought she kicked her or something. But yeah, good for her. Man, blue thing. Knocked out. Yeah, man. 
it's just easier to lose in MMA. It's, it's harder to stay undefeated in MMA. Um, that's why I give a lot of credit to the fighters who can have a long win streak. You know, long win streak. It's hard to do in MMA. Uh, hey, you, we don't know what we're going to see in the future. MMA is a crazy sport. Maybe Shevchenko will make a comeback. Get her belt back, make a bunch of defenses. Maybe Manon gets the belt, make a bunch of defenses. Whaley, uh, we got to see her in her next fight. Because if she looked like this again, I'm going to be worried. She, if in my opinion, now who am I? I ain't nobody. In my opinion, she needs to master pacing. That's my, just my opinion, my humble opinion. I think she needs to focus on mastering pacing. It's dangerous when you gas yourself out like that in a five-round fight. Because if you don't get that second win, if you just keep fading, starting in the third round, you get, and you in all kinds of trouble. Getting tired, the worst thing can happen to you in combat. Once you're gassed, there ain't nothing you can do. You're just going to get beat up. <laughs> it's, it's the worst feeling. It's because you know what need to be done. And you might be able to do it if you had the strength. But, yeah. She got to be careful with that. But she seemed like she got a, a, a strong heart. I've seen athletes um, like that. I've been seeing athletes like that for a long time. They will gas out midway through the fight and then get a second. Some fighters, they do that all throughout the career. But a lot of them will lose during that moment where they gassed out. So it's something you know you might want to correct. Right? You might want to tune that up. Yeah. They call it everything. Yeah. Yeah. Holly, uh, I don't know why she just don't retire. Yeah. A dangerous sport, you know, but, but hey, as long as she's healthy, I guess. I expect to see a lot of them fighting in the, the relatively old age. You know, imagine 50 year old Shevchenko in there. She's one of them. I don't see retiring no time soon. Valentina, I'm, I'm prepared to see her 40. She only like what 32, 33. So we will see. Let me get out of here. Uh, I got other things to do on this marvelous weekend. Hope y'all enjoyed the card, and I will chop it up with you on the next live stream.